Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twist. 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to Poems of Dreams. We're now on eggs, by the way. To dream of eggs. Now this is, was very favourable in the 1855s for physicians and artists to dream of them. Um, because it meant that something positive was to come. You know, a new discovery, um, a new muse, for example. But apparently, others, they dreamt of it. And then it meant strife and anxiety for some reason <laughs> back then. I'm not sure why. Holding or cooking eggs is um, a sign of sorrow. To eat them when cooked is a sign of wealth. Now eggs mean fertility and long life and such things. But back then that's what they meant. The poem. Quam potra. Ot oe, comarbi et noa, instabula si legunta. <laughs> et e magare bella, tu festiva poella. Pinguis ladicum, frustris, conquuntur, ut bellies in prato. Aprico ar late, su solo tam loete remident, oe tosta in mensa, mapa beme extensa, nitidissima lans consident. Oh, tis eggs are a treat, when so white or so sweet, from under the manger they're taken. And by fair margere, oh, tis she's full of glee. We are fried with fat rushes of bacon, just like daisies all spread over the broad sunny mead, and the sunbeams so beautifully shining, our fried eggs fair displayed on a dish when we've laid the cloth and are thinking of dining. Now that poem was in Latin, but that's the uh, translation to English because there's no point me just telling you in Latin because what would well especially Latin back then because it was very confusing emerald so those who dream of emeralds which would be known as presini colares um they become well well renowned it means someone who becomes well known for something very positive and it also means that you could meet with the truth, but it means fidelity too. That was 1855, like I say. The dream of emeralds now means a lot of different things, and it's all put into a context of a dream and very confusing. But anyway, let's go to the point. It is a gem which hath the power to show if plighted lovers keep their faith or no. If faithful, it is like the leaves of spring. In faithless, like those leaves when withering. Take back again your emerald gem. There is no colour in the stone. It might have graced diadem. But now its hue and light are gone. Take back your gift and give me mine. The kiss that sealed our last low bow. Ah, other lips have been on thine. My kiss is lost and sullied now. The gem is pale, the kiss forgot, and more than ever you are changed. But my true love has altered not, my heart is broken, not estranged. What that means is, the colour of the gem that he's dreaming represents his lover's actions. If it's shiny and green like it should be, the lover is faithful. If it is discoloured and brown like an autumn leaf, they are not faithful. If there is no colour, then they are worse than not faithful. They are not faithful and they do not love you and there is no hope. Okay? <laughs> so it's saying. The next one. For it is said, and hath be said, full your, the emerald green of parafe chastite, stole ones away, may not, recurred be. I have no idea what that means. 
de wereld ge green smaragdos, most sovereign over passion. And that's that. I have no idea what it means, but yeah. It's very interesting to read these, though, because although they used to word things back then, they worded them so differently. Entertainments. To dream of an entertainment or a feast back then, um, unexpected good fortune and success. Interesting. The poem. I dreamed that I sat on a palace step, wrapped up in a mantle thin, and I gazed with a smile on the world without, with a growl at my world within, till I heard the merry voices ring of a lordly company, and straight to myself I began to sing, it is there that I ought to be. Along I gazed through a lattice rays, which smiled from the old grey wall, and my glance went in with the evening breeze, and ran all the revellers all, and I said, if they saw me, t'would cool their mirth, far more than this wild breeze free, but a merrier party was near on earth, and among them I fain would be, and oh, but they all were beautiful, fairer than fairy dreams, and the words were sweet as the wind harps tone, when it rings o'er summer streams, and they pledged each other with a noble mien, true heart with my life to thee. The next one, alack, quoth I, but my souls are dry, and among them I fain would be. It's like um, an added part to this that came in later, so it's the same poem, but it's just added on later. And the gentlemen were noble souls, good fellows, both sane and sound. I had not deemed that a man like this could over the world be found. They spoke of brave and beautiful things, of all that were dear to me. And I thought, perhaps they would be like me well, if among them I once might be. And lovely were the ladies too who sat in the light bright hall, and one there was, oh, dream of life, the loveliest mid them all. She sat alone by an empty chair, the queen of the feast was she, and I said to myself, by that lady fair, I certainly ought to be, and aloud she spoke, we have waited long, for one who in fear and doubt, looks wistfully into our hall of song, and he sits on the steps without. I have sung to him long in silent dreams. I have led him o'er land and sea. Go, welcome him in as the rank beseems, and give him a place by me. They opened the door, yet I shrunk with shame as I sat in my mantle thin. But, they hailed me out with a joyous shout, and merrily they led me in. They gave me a place by my bright-haired love, as she wept with joy and glee, and I said to myself, by the stars above, I'm just where I ought to be. Farewell to thee, life of joy and grief, farewell to thy care and pain, farewell thy vulgar and selfish world, for I never will know thee again. I live in a land where good fellows abound, in the Leme by the sea. They may long for a happier life, that will. I am just where I ought to be. And the next is Evil Spirits. And bear in mind again, I'm just going to say this is 1855. <laughs> it's such a dream of unnatural spirits back then was a sign of imminent danger and witchcraft. Um, sickness, ill fortune, witches are coming for you. We don't mean that now, guys, okay? It means something different, and sometimes it's complicated to explain what it means now because it depends on the dream context rather than just the actual thing. Anyway, the um, 
coin. The forms which people this terrific trance, I will remember, like a choir of devils. Around me they involved a giddy dance. Legions seemed gathering from the misery levels of ocean to supply those ceaseless revels. Foul, foul ceaseless shadows. Thought could not divide the actual world from these entangling evils which so bemock themselves that I descry all shapes like mine own self hideously multiplied. Mine eyes were open then and the veil which conceals the invisible world was withdrawn and through those open gates the fiends were swarming forth hastily joyfully, as to jubilee. The spirits of curse were trooping up. They filled the streets, and they bore with them curses and plagues, and they scattered lies abroad, horrors, obscenities, blasphemies, treasons, and the seeds of strife and death. And that's the end of this part, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, it's interesting what they thought back then, isn't it? <laughs> Very different to what it is now anyway. Many blessings. Wisteria. Energy. Twister.